the Bonanza is a rock star. It's one of the most produced planes in the world, with over 17,000 units sold. In the past, there were some problems with the VTEL design, but despite this, it's still the only plane that's still being produced since 1947. So don't swipe or click away, because here is what makes the Beechcraft Bonanza excellent. This seemingly small general aviation plane can house six people inside, including one pilot. A company by the name of Beach Aircraft Corporation, located in Wichita, Kansas, started producing this iconic six-seater in 1947. And to this day, the production has never stopped. While other planes were discontinued from time to time, the Bonanza remained on the market, and to date, they have sold over 17,000 aircraft. Now, let's imagine that we're in 1947. So it's only two years after the Second World War has ended, and aircraft are the talk of the town. High middle class Americans are talking about owning their little plane, which they could fly around. Many of them could fly these aircrafts alone because of the training they received during the war. But BAC wasn't the only company trying to feed the newly opened market. Cessna was their biggest competitor. They created the Cessna 195, which was a successful plane, but something was missing. You see, World War II showed the world just how advanced aircraft technology could be. The Cessna 195 was not up to par with the aviation technologies of the day. It had a high-wing, seven-cylinder radial engine, rolled down side windows, and the tail wheel undercarriage was fixed. In other words, this was just like all of those other pre-war plane models. The customers wanted something new, something that screamed modern. Enter Beechcraft Bonanza. You see, this one had a low wing, all aluminum design with a six cylinder engine and a retractable tricycle undercarriage. All of this made the plane easier to manage and relatively fast. This plane resembled all of those fighter jets people saw during the war, so orders poured in. Soon, the company grew famous for smashing that like button just like you should if you haven't already done so. But no, in all seriousness, they became famous for their VTEL plane. Also, in a time when all of the other aircrafts had wooden frames covered with fabric, the Bonanza was all metal. And what planes were all metal at that time? The fighter jets of World War II. After numerous testing, they produced between 30 to 40 aircraft. Now, the first aircraft had fabric-covered flaps and ailerons, but soon after, all of that was changed and they were replaced with magnesium alloy sheet. Speaking of improvements, we should mention that the first Bonanza aircraft produced from 1947 until 1982 was called the Fork Tail Dr. Killer. Why Dr. Killer? Well, because this was the 50s. Planes were expensive. The only people who could afford them were the upper middle class and the rich. That means doctors. Many of these amateur pilots were overconfident sitting in the plane. They thought it would be easy flying one, so they never bothered to learn much about the plane. Eventually, numerous crashes and fatal incidents and breakups in mid-flight happened as a result. This caught the eye of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. They wanted to test whether or not the VTEL was responsible for all of the incidents, which would give them the right to demand BAC change the tail of the plane. Upon close inspection, it was revealed that a staggering 73% of the accidents with a VTEL were due to pilot error. But what about the crashes with the conventional tailplanes? Well, those were higher, with 83% of the accidents being caused by pilot error. The aircraft-related causes for crashing with a VTEL made up only 15% of all the crashes. So they decided that there would be no need for the aircraft's tail design to be changed. Or so they thought. You see, after the U.S. Department of Transportation and the FAA told Beechcraft to conduct more wind tunnel testing and standard flight tests, they realized something. The VTEL did not meet certification standards in certain situations. Because of this, they had to scrap the VTEL and replace it with a conventional tail. But they found a different problem. You see, since the landing gear was retractable, this meant the pilot could just flip a switch on the board and the landing gear would pop up after takeoff or extend before landing. But the problem came precisely because of this switch. It was the same for both the landing gear and the one that operates the flaps, and pilots often confused them because they were so close together. After 1894, Beechcraft was forced to change this and make their aircraft safer. They relocated the switch so it's far away from the one for operating the flaps. The company made it even more distinct by making this a squat switch, which meant that the landing gear couldn't be turned on while the aircraft was on the ground. 
nor could it retract the landing gear at low engine power settings. After all of these changes, the Bonanza experienced some changes to the design. The three main models, the 35 Bonanza, the 33 Bonanza, and the 36 Bonanza, each had their different models. If you were to take all of the different models and place them in one airport, you would have about 40 different models of the same aircraft. Yeah, it was that popular. Even militaries like the ones in Indonesia, Iran, and the United States have used them in their respective air forces. So what did the Bonanza offer besides six seats? Well, with its 27 foot, 8.4 meters length, and a wingspan of 33 feet, 10.2 meters, the aircraft has an empty weight of 2,512 pounds, 1.14 tons. The gross weight of the aircraft is 3,650 pounds, 1.65 tons, and all of this weight is powered by Continental IO-550B engine, which produces 300 horsepower and allows the plane to reach an astounding 176 knots, or 203 miles per hour. Because of the fairly large fuel tank, the aircraft can reach a destination of 820 miles, 1,300 kilometers away. Plus, it can soar to heights of about 18,500 feet in the air, about 5,600 meters. But one man didn't think this range was enough. Captain William Odom decided that the 40-gallon fuel tank was not enough. He added an additional 228 gallons of fuel to the aircraft. And just like that, the range was increased to 5,000 miles. And there was a reason behind this. Since he had the fourth Bonanza ever to be produced, he wanted to fly it from Honolulu, Hawaii to the continental United States. While for others it seemed impossible, for William Odom it became a reality in January of 1949. Did he stop there? Nope. Captain Odom wanted to make the Waikiki Beach popular. That's why after the first flight, he decided to get inside the aircraft one last time and set a world record for the longest non-stop flight in the world. In March of 1949, he flew the aircraft for 36 hours and one minute from Honolulu to Taterboro, New Jersey. The plane consumed about 272.25 gallons of fuel and flew at an average speed of 146 miles per hour, 235 kph. After this record, it was time to retire the aircraft, so Odom donated it to the Smithsonian Institution's National Air Museum. But that wasn't the end of that. On October 7, 1951, Peter F. Mack Jr., a congressman from Illinois, decided to make a trip around the world. He went to the Smithsonian National Air Museum and asked them if he could borrow the same Beechcraft Odom flew just two years earlier. For 15 weeks, or 223 hours of fly time, this congressman went to 30 countries and he even got to rename the plane to Friendship Plane. After the record was set, Peter refurbished the plane and returned it to the National Air and Space Museum. Since then, no one has touched the plane until Matt Guthmiller on May 31, 2014. This is when an MIT student from Aberdeen, South Dakota took off from California and for 44 days and 12 hours, he flew across the world all by himself. He was the youngest man in history to get the record, coming in at only 19 years, 7 months and 15 days. During these 44 days, he made 23 stops and visited 15 countries traveling 30,500 miles, 49,100 kilometers. On a related note, do you think the Beechcraft Bonanza is better than the Cessna 195? You can tell us in the comments section below. If you like more videos like these, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of them. And as always, thanks for watching guys.